Hi Frantic, I hope you're all keeping well and safe uh, and I'm sure all of you are loving your return to school. I hope you're missing Frantic as much as we are uh, and I promise you that as soon as we are allowed back uh, you'll be the first to hear about it uh, and we cannot wait to have Frantic together again. Until then, I hope you're enjoying these stories and, and these worksheets and these things that we're sending out and I hope you're enjoying learning more about Jesus and learning more about the Bible. I'm going to bring you this week's story. Uh, and this week we're looking at a really interesting character called Joseph. If you're familiar with the Bible, then you may already know this story. And, it, and if you do, then that's great. Uh, I'm sure this will just be a refresher for you. But if you don't know, Joseph was a son, one of 12. Now I want you to think about this. Some of you have brothers and sisters, uh, and I'm sure that as brothers and sisters, you are nothing but kind and loving and friendly and there's no fighting uh, and you don't find each other annoying at all because uh, you guys are just awesome. However, in Joseph's family, it wasn't always like this. Joseph was one of 12 boys. There wasn't any girls uh, that we read about. There's Joseph and he's got 12 brothers. Now that's 13 boys in total and that's a lot. I can speak from experience as a leader of Frantic who has dealt with numerous of boys who have been uh, interesting, shall we say, but having 13 at once is hard, okay? It's hard to deal with 13 boys, especially when you've got boys like these in, that we read about in Genesis 37. Now, Joseph uh, was the second youngest, okay? So he had one below him uh, and he had, I think it was 10 above him. Uh, but when we read Genesis 37, which is where our story comes from today, so if you'd like to have a look at it yourself, you can. Uh, and we start in verse 3, where we read that Jacob loved, and Jacob was his dad, Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he was the son who had the most wisdom. And he made him a robe of many colours. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peacefully to him. You might have heard of Joseph and his Technicolor dream coat, or you might have seen pictures of, of a man with, with his coat on, and it's got all stripes of different colours. And when you see that, that's referring to Joseph. Now, we don't actually know what his, his coat looked like, but what we do know is that Jacob, their dad, made it for Joseph because he was their favourite. Now, if you've got brothers and sisters, you know what it's like uh, and if you don't have brothers and sisters, then you know at school what it's like when, when someone else is the favourite. Whether that be your, your brother or your sister, usually the youngest ones, let's be honest. Or if you don't have any brothers and sisters in class, it's always that one, that one child who puts their hand up for every question and they're always sitting nicely and they're always listening and they're always being good. Uh, you know what it's like when someone else is the favourite. Or if you're the youngest sibling yourself, you probably know what it's like to be the favourite. And Joseph was the favourite. Uh, we read that Jacob, their dad, loved him more than all the others. Uh, and because of that, he got treated better. Yeah, he, got, he got this special coat. He got this, this item that his dad made for him that all the brothers saw and were upset about. And what we want to read about today and what I want to talk about is how God helps us when we're in bad situations. I'm not going to read the whole story now because it's quite long. So I encourage you to go and read it yourself in your own Bibles. And if you haven't got one, uh, then we can get one to you. Just let us know if you need one. Um, but what we read about in Genesis 37 is that his brothers come up with a plan to get rid of Joseph. Right. Uh, I must be talking good things because the sun is shining on me now. But Joseph's brothers find a way to get rid of him. All right, now you, uh, as lovely children, would never do anything like this. And I'm sure that even though your brother and sister might be the favourite, uh, and you might have little fights here and there, generally you love each other and you are friends and you get on and you share your things nicely. And, but here, we don't read that, sadly. What we read about is Joseph's brothers uh, come up with a plan to get rid of him. And what they actually end up doing is they end up selling Joseph into slavery. And now that sounds ridiculous and that sounds terrible. Uh, and that's because it is. Uh, his brothers were so jealous and were so upset that he was the favourite that they sold him into slavery 
just to get rid of him, just to give them a chance to be their dad's favourite. Uh, and what they tell uh, Jacob, their dad, is that Joseph was attacked and died. Uh, and what they do is they bring back this special coat that Jacob had made for him and they cover it in blood and say, oh, Dad, you won't believe what's happened. Uh, Jacob was attacked and, and he's died. And uh, so Joseph was attacked and he died. And, and obviously you know, Jacob's very upset by this and, and we read about that. But what we go on to read through Genesis 37 uh, through to 38 and 39 uh, is that Joseph goes on a real journey. Uh, he moves from his his land of Canaan uh, in Israel uh, and he moves all the way to Egypt in North Africa. Right? And he moves a very long way, taken away from his whole family, everything he knows and loves. Uh, and he goes through a journey of, of not just surviving uh, and keeping his head down and getting on with things, but rather he goes from being this lowly, slave to becoming the ruler of all of Egypt, right? second only to the pharaoh. Right? So he becomes a, a, a top dog in Egypt. And you might be thinking that he gets lucky and he, and he, gets, he gets away with it. And, but what I want to tell you is, in fact, it was God that helped him. You see, despite everything, what had gone wrong, you know, Joseph had a lot of things go wrong. His brothers sell him into slavery. He loses his family. He moves halfway across the world into a country he doesn't know or speak the language and what we read is that he stays faithful to God and despite everything Joseph finds it within himself to trust God you know everything around him is going wrong and and, we're, and he's struggling and he's and he's he's in a bad place but even in those dark places Joseph turned to God and, and that's what we can learn from Joseph's story we can see that when things go wrong uh, and you might look outside today and, and see a, a world that's very different to the one we saw last year. You know, we, there's this really scary virus going around and, and, and lots of people getting ill and, and being sick and school looks a bit different than it used to. And there's all these new rules that we have to follow and, and things are a bit scary because we've never had to live like this before. And so it's easy to look at our world and, and be scared and not know what's going on. And what God says is that God never changes. Well, you know, last year when you, know, you might have really fond memories of last year, you might have gone on a really great holiday. You might have really enjoyed school for that year. You might have made some really new friends and, and things could have gone really good last year. And it's easy to look back and see all the things that were great and look now and think, oh, things suck. I'm really... I'm not enjoying this year. I'm, I'm having to go to school and I can't really play with my friends properly and I'm, I'm struggling. Uh, and what I want to say is, you know, God is the same as last year as he is this year. And when we read Joseph's story, we can really see that God helps those who love him and those that follow him every day and read all about him in, in, in the Bible and they pray and, and, they, and they follow God every day. And what we see is that God helps those that love him. And so, guys, what I want you to do this week, whether that's, you know, every day or, or maybe you choose once or twice this week, uh, is just to open up your Bibles, you know, turn to Genesis 37 and just read a few pages and just see what Joseph went through and see how he went from being a slave to being almost the king of Egypt. Uh, and it's not just because Joseph was this amazing guy, but it's because God was helping him through the hard times uh, and that's what we can learn too so I want to pray now uh, I'm going to pray for us uh, not just as frantic but as a as a country and as a nation and as a world uh, and if you are one of those people that are finding it tough uh, and are not enjoying this this new world that we're living in at the moment where we're having to stay indoors a bit more and we can't go out with our friends as much as we'd want to and if you're feeling a little bit scared about this virus um then i'm going to pray for you especially uh, and if you aren't and you're happy and you know you're just you're just rolling with it and you just you know you're not bothered by the virus that's cool too uh, i'm going to pray for you as well uh, so if you'd like to join in this prayer then just close your eyes uh, take a few deep breaths just to Settle yourself, uh, and I'm going to pray. Father God, I thank you 
that we can always turn to you when we are struggling, when things are hard, when we feel scared, when we uh, fall sick, when we know people that get sick, uh, when we see all these scary things on the TV and, and things are unsure and we don't know what's going on. I thank you that at any time we can turn to you and we can know that you are God and you are always in control. Lord, I pray for Frantic. I pray for the kids that are struggling, that are scared, uh, that don't know what's going on. Uh, I pray that you would fill them with your peace. I pray that right now as they're praying with me, whether out loud, uh, saying their own prayers, whether they're just listening to mine, I pray that your Holy Spirit would be upon them right now and that they'd feel uh, a sense of peace uh, they might start laughing with joy that you give them and they might deeply understand that you love them. Uh, and even though things are going wrong, that doesn't mean you love them any less. You love them just the same. And that you're going to help them through this week uh, at school or next week at school or, you know, in half term. You're going to be with them and they're going to know that. And Lord, I pray for those that are uh, just, you know, cool and they're, they're not struggling and they're not... Uh, finding it scary and I just thank you that you've been with them also and you've been helping them through this too. I pray that you'd help us to always know that you are with us and that you love us. I thank you for Joseph's story which we can read about in Genesis. I thank you that we can see that even when things go wrong we can always turn to you and that you'll always help us through these hard situations uh, and we'll always be able to achieve more when we walk with you then we don't. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So if you enjoyed that story or you enjoyed what I, or what I prayed or you found it really encouraging and helpful, then make sure you go and read Genesis 37 through to 39. It's a few pages, so you can take it, take it slow, read it at your own pace. You can read it across a couple of days and just see how God helped Joseph uh, and take encouragement and, and find joy in the fact that as God helped Joseph, he can help you too. Uh, that's everything from me this week. Uh, my friend Billy the Bear, he's just on holiday at the moment. He'll be joining me next time. Uh, but until then, I hope to see you all soon. Uh, I look forward to when Frantic can come back. Uh, but until then, stay safe uh, and I'll see you all soon.